Okay, folks, I've got to do this last little one for you, as you can see. Lots of mosses and everything around, right? Um, we're on the northern flank of Mount Jim. We're in the seeps. All right, as I said, there is mosses everywhere. So I'm going to stand up on this little high spot for a second and show you. Look at these pristine sea poles full of water. Right now, there's absolutely no damage. There's no hoof prints. There's no chewed up banks. There's no anything here. It's basalt country. You can see it all out the back. It's all around me, right? Now, yep, a couple of areas over there of bare ground. Nothing to do with the horses, okay? Um, it happens from time to time. And um, waters would be sitting in there. They've flowed down into these ones now. Still a bit of moisture around. And they'll start to generate again. But I just wanted to give you a quick little trip down through this one. Because you can see the, the changes that occur in it. All the different types of mosses that exist in and amongst all of the rock. Alright, and then we come to the next pond down. I'm being careful. I'm stepping to the sides. Um, you know, we don't want to damage it. I'll step out a little bit onto this spit. Now again, you can see all the way around it. You can see through to the bottom. Crystal clear. Right, no damage, no hoof prints. Now, um, we all talk about how they come up and take doctored images, right? So... There's an image you can see. We've gone from a pool there and a pool there to this nice patch of land through the middle that's got lots of mosses and everything. And you can see all these tiny little pools of water. Now, from a distance, that's easy to blame and say that horses have walked in and made all of these impressions in the ground or chewed it up, right? So we're taking a walk through now. I want to show you. It's not hoof prints, okay? There's little bits of rock poking up that help make it bare which then, as water moves around, it creates hollows, and the mosses will move in and fill it all up, yep. All right, there's not a hoof print in there to be seen. Not a single one. So we're gonna shimmy around, and the reason we're shimmying around is because I want you to see that there are no hoof prints in it, and then I want you to see that there's actually a trail here. Right, now, what this trail is, is again, made by humans. So there's the walking track. It's got a few stones to step on through there, but they don't go all the way. So humans as they are, when that's full and deep, and trust me, it gets about a foot deeper than it is when it's full. Us humans walk around here. There's human footprints there, it's not mine. Um, there's another one down there. So the humans come across here and they walk through on what is effectively a little high spot between the sea poles or a natural land bridge. And then they come out the other side. They join back onto their walking trail, yep. So we'll show you this side. You can see the water and everything over there. You can see all the mosses here. Now again, you can see all these dark circular things in there. It's not hoof prints. It's stones, okay? It's areas where the mosses don't grow because there's stones there. And in some areas, what happens is the moss grows up and it covers the stones. But you can see how if we were to come all the way back over here and just show you that at a distance, and I'll zoom it in just a little bit for argument's sake, there's your beautiful clear water and there's all your reported in these nice still photographs that end up in their reports justifying the removal of our heritage brumbies. Uh, they're reported to be hoof prints, pug marks in amongst the moss. So you can see how easy it is for them to twist it, to corrupt it. It's why I don't really show you still photos as evidence of a lack of damage. There you go. Just to show you I haven't been up here yet. That boot print's not mine. And it's the same as the boot print that we showed you just before. So we are on the human walking trail. Here we go, it turns the corner, you can see here. Um, there's the pole, we'll zoom out. You can probably see that there's some natural high spots and low spots. So this is the top end of the seep that we just walked through. Uh, and it flows down and back across the walking trail. So anyway, we'll go along following all of this um, chop up and um, erosion and denuding of soils and see what I mean about the walking trail now holds up water 
and we'll get up here and I'll show you nice and closely. You can actually see the water flowing there as it now follows the path down the man-made walking trail from this nice moss-covered seat bed here. Now if the walking track wasn't eroded as it is, and we'll do this, I don't know if you can see that, there's my fingers touching the bottom, right, you know, we're talking five to six inches deep. If that wasn't there, then that seep line, instead of turning the corner and going down that walking trail and chewing it out even further, would flow off over into those seep holes over there and find its way into High Plains Creek. I love showing it to you folks. I love showing you the hypocrisy. Here we go. Yeah, hoof prints, but not made by a horse. Made by humans and mountain bikes. Through the seeps we go. Oh, look again. Don't use the stepping stones. We'll ride our mountain bikes through the edges, through the moss beds. But it's all the horse's fault. Leave it with you, folks. I know it's more of the same. But this is an area I haven't shown you before. So it shows you just how widespread the human contempt and the human hypocrisy is here on our Bogong High Plains. Catch you later.